Yeah, she now rocking with Mr. Wit. A little flavor from Q Beats, you know that this a hit. Michael Jackson bad, yeah, this is it. A few months ago, I was about to call it quits. Until I came across personalized math tutoring. FBT, the number one solution. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Wit with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is gonna be about composition of functions. Composition of functions, all right? So anytime you see this little bitty circle here, this little symbol here, it looks like a O, it looks like a little degree symbol. It's a composition symbol, and it's asking you to find the composition of these two functions. Oh yeah, so basically anytime you see F composite G of X, it means the same as F of G of X. That's right, that you plug in the second function into the first function. So there's going to be a lot of substitution in this lesson today. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. In our first example, we have the following problem. We're given two functions, f and g. Remember that anytime you see f of x or g of x, it simply means the variable y. However, they use this notation, function notation, so that they can label, name the equation so that you'll know which one they're referring to. So the first one is named f of x, and it equals to 2x minus 3, whereas your g function is equivalent to negative x plus 3. So in our first problem, problem here, 1a, they want us to find the composite of f and g of 4. All right. Well, this means that they want you to find out f of g of 4. Yeah, that's what that means. So what you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is when you're setting these up, is to start from the right and work your way to the left. In other words, you'll be placing 4 in g, taking that result, and then placing that result within f. And that's the way you do it. So I'm going to start out by finding out what this g of 4 is first, okay? So that means I'll be replacing every x in g with a value of 4. So this becomes negative 4 plus 3, which gives me a value of negative 1. I'm going to take this value of negative 1 and plug it into the f function. So that means that now that i found out that g of 4 is equivalent to negative 1, we'll find out what f of negative 1 is. All right, so I'll be replacing the x in the original f function with negative 1 and then simplifying that. So this gives me 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, and then negative 2 minus 3 gives me a value of negative 5, which is the answer to this problem. I'm going to put my answer in a red box and that's it. Yeah, that's it. So we found that f composite g of 4 is equivalent to negative 5. Because once you find out what the value of g of 4 is, you can take that result, in this case this negative 1, and plug it into your f function to get your final answer. And that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that was a recap on that. All right, let's go ahead and look at part b. In part B, they want us to find out what g composite f of negative 2 is. So this means to find out what g of f of negative 2 is. All right. Well, currently, I don't know what f of negative 2 is, so I want to find that out first. All right. So plugging in negative 2 into our f function, we'll have 2 times negative 2 minus 3. So 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4 minus 3, which equals to negative 7. All right. Now I have this value of negative 7. We're going to plug that result into our function g. So plugging in negative 7 into our g function, we'll have g of negative 7 equals to negative negative 7 plus 3, which equals to 7 plus 3, which gives an answer of 10, which is the answer. And that's it. And we'll go ahead and put a red box around that. So once again, we start off by working backwards by plugging in negative 2 into our f function, which once again was the original two functions from the beginning, that f of x equals to 2x minus 3 and the g of x equals to negative x plus 3. We're using those, and I plug in that negative 2 in the f and then plug that result into the g function. And that's exactly what happens here when I'm plugging in negative 2 in the f and then taking our answer, which is negative 7, out of that f function and plugging it into g to find out what g of negative 7 is and ending up with a result of positive 10 which is the answer and that ladies and gentlemen is the result of 1b let's continue on with our next problem here looking at 1d we have g composite g of negative 2 so this means I'll be plugging in negative 2 
into G and then taking that result and plugging it into G. So that being the case, ladies and gentlemen, we'll find out what G of negative 2 is first by plugging in negative 2 into the G function. Remember the G function is negative X plus 3. So this becomes negative negative 2 plus 3, which is 2 plus 3, which gives me a value of 5. I'm going to plug this value of 5 back into the G function. So that means that I need to find out what G of 5 is, which gives us negative 5 plus 3, which equals to negative 2, which is our answer. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That's 1D. So that was the first problem, and now we'll be moving on to problem number 2. In problem number two, we're given two xy charts, two tables with values. Notice that the first one is labeled as f of x, and the second one is labeled as g of x. So here, we can still accomplish our goal of finding the composites using these two tables here. So in A, when I'm asked to find f composite g of 2, this means to find out what f of g of 2 is. All right. So that being the case, Finding out what g of 2 is takes us to the following. We'll plug in 2 into our g function to get a result of 3. So notice where our x value is now 2, we end up with a g of x value or a y value of 3. Once I get that value of 3, we want to plug that into the f function. So plugging in 3 as an x value into the f function, you'll end up with a y value of positive 1. So the answer to a is 1. That's it. All right, so we're basically doing the same process as before, except we don't actually have to plug in and calculate anything because it's already given to us. So we replaced our x value with 2 in our g function to end up with a y value of 3. Then we took that result of 3 and plugged it in for x into our f function to get a final result of positive 1. And that's how you go about finding the composite using the xy chart, aka your tables here. All right, let's look at b. In B, we have G composite F of 3. Once again, this means to find out what G of F of 3 is. All right. So, finding out what F of 3 is means that we go to our table for F, and where we're plugging in 3, we'll end up with a value of 1. So, we know that the end result of F of 3 is a value of 1. So, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and show that this now becomes G of 1, because we know the value of F of 3 is 1. Now, we'll be plugging in 1 as an X value into our G function. So, going back to our G table here, where X is 1, we end up with a value value of positive 9, so that's our answer. Our answer is just 9. That's it. Done and done. All right, so that was part B. Now, looking at C here, 2C, we'll have F composite F of 4. This means that we want to find out what F of F of 4 is. So we want to find out what f of 4 is first and then plug that result back into f. Using 4 as our value of x, we end up with a y value of 3. So now that we know that 3 is the result of f of 4, we'll plug in 3 back into f to end up with a final answer of 1. So once again, we start out with our original x value of 4. That resulted in an answer of 3. Then we take that 3 plug it back in as our x value, and that gives us a value of 1 for y. And that's the answer, 1. All right, putting a red box around that. So now looking at 2D, we have G composite G of 1. Okay, so this means to find out what G of G of 1 is. So going back to our tables here, we'll be plugging in 1 into our G function, which gives us a result of 9. Now that we have that value of 9, we plug it back into G as X. And now plugging in 9 in for X, we'll end up with a result of 12, which is your answer. So 12 is the result of 2D. Done and done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying this because, well, I am. All right. Looking now at problem number three, we have two f and g functions here. We have f of x equals to the square root of x as well as g of x equals to 2x plus 3. So what we'll want to find out first in part a is f composite g of x. Well, this means to find out what f of g of x is. So what we'll want to do is plug in our g function in for every x that you'll find in f. 
That's right. The entire function of g will be plugged in where x is in our original f function. That's right. So that being the case, we'll end up with the following. We'll have the square root, and instead of writing x now, I'll be plugging in 2x plus 3. So this becomes the square root of 2x plus 3, and then you do your best to simplify the result after you plug in everything. And in this case, you can't do anything. That's the answer. That's it. Done and done. So anytime you have your composites with your variable of x and you already have x in the original functions, you simply plug in the entire function into the other. And remember, you're going to work backwards here, which means that g will go into f, not the other way around. You'll end up with a different result if you do that. So don't do it that way. All right. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with 3a and it's in a red box. So that means we can move on to our next problem. Looking at b here, we're going to be using those same two functions of f and g, and we want to find out what g composite f of x is. Well, this means that they want us to find g of f of x. So in this problem here, we'll be plugging in the entire f function, which is the square root of x, into the g function where you have that variable x there, right there. Mm -hmm. So this becomes the following. We'll have 2 times the square root of x plus 3, and then you're responsible for simplifying, reducing the result here. But there's nothing you can do with 2 times the square root of x plus 3. It's already simplified. So this, once again, is your answer. Done and done. Mm -hmm. Just like that. That's g composite f of x using our f and g functions right here at the top of the page. Okay, so let's look at some more problems, all right? I like to have a lot of examples so you guys can have a lot to refer back to, all right? So here we have it. In problem three, we have f of x equals to the square root of x. Once again, the g of x equals to 2x plus 3. That's right, using the same f and g functions as before. In part C, we are asked to find what f composite g of 1 is. This means the following. To find out what f of g of 1 is. That's right. Plug in 1 into the g function, then plug that result into f. So what I'll do now is I'll find out what g of 1 is. That means I'll be replacing the x in that g function with the value of 1. This gives me 2 times 1 plus 3 equals to 2 plus 3. Hey, where'd that 2 go? Which equals now to 5. All right. Yes g of 1 equals to 5. Now you take that result and you plug it back into your f function. Okay? So here I want to find out what f of 5 is now. And plugging in f of 5, you'll end up with the square root of 5. All right. Well, I don't know what that is. And we can't simplify it easily. So that's the result. That's it. Square root of 5. I'm putting the box around it. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Mr. Witt, I thought you knew what that was. No, no. No, I don't know the decimal representation of the square root of 5. All right? It's going to be 2 point something. That's it. Okay. Let's continue. Looking at D, we have G composite F of 4. Mm-hmm. G composite F of 4. So this means G of F of 4. All right. So let's find that out. We'll need to find out what f of 4 is first, right? So f of 4 is going to be the result of us plugging in 4 into our f function. So let's do just that. So we'll have the square root of 4 equals to 2. Once I find out this result is 2, we'll plug that into g. Remember, g is 2x plus 3. So finding out g of 2 here, we'll end up with 2 times 2 plus 3, which equals to 4 plus 3, which gives us an answer of 7. And that's it. I'm putting a red box around it. There you go. So let's continue on. I got one more problem to show you, ladies and gentlemen. One more problem, which is problem number 4. Uh-huh. And in problem number 4, we have three functions. Check that out. I have f of x equals to x squared plus 4. I have g of x equals to 2x plus 3. I have h of x equals to x minus 5. What? Yeah, okay. So now that we have our 4a, it's going to be h composite g of 4. Well, yeah, that means to plug in 4 into g, get that result, and then plug it into h. Okay, so let's do just that. And I always like to show what it means. It's going to be h of g of 4. Yeah. Okay, so finding out what this g of 4 is first, plugging 4 into g, we'll end up with 2 times 4 plus 3, which is simply 8 plus 3. 
well, that's just going to give us 11, right? All right, then we plug this 11 into the h function. So finding out what h of 11 is, you'll end up with 11 minus 5, which gives you an answer of 6. All right, red boxing it right there. Mm-hmm, just like that. I'm going to use blue now because I want to. All right, so here we're going to end up with 4B now. This is F composite G of 4. This means F of G of 4. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Why work hard here? We already know that G of 4 is 11. We just found that out, right? So therefore, we want to find out next what F of 11 is. There you go. Yeah. There you go, f of 11. So f of 11 is going to be the result of having 11 squared plus 4. This gives you 121 plus 4, which equals to 125. That's the answer. All right. So going back, looking at B, we have F composite G of 4. That's the same thing as F of G of 4. We need to find out what G of 4 is. But we already did. It's right here. Yeah, it's 11. So we plug the 11 back into our f function. That's 11 squared, which means 11 times 11 is 121. Add 4 to that. You end up with your answer, 125, and a nice red box. A nice red box. There you go. All right. Now, let's move on to our next problem here. All right, our next problem. We're still in 4, right, but I'm just saying the next part of 4. How about that? So we still have our three functions here that we're dealing with. In part C, we're looking at g composite f of 6. Yeah, G composite F of 6. So this means, all right, let's get a meaning here. Let's get a meaning here. It's going to equal to G of F of 6, which means that we'll be plugging in 6 into our F function and then plugging that result into G. So F of 6 is going to be equivalent to 6 squared plus 4. Well, 6 squared is 36 plus 4, which results in uh, 40. Yeah. Okay, we'll take this result of 40 and plug it into G. So we want to find out what G of 40 is. All right, so plugging in 40 into the G function, 2 times 40 plus 3. This gives me 80 plus 3. Oh, yeah, and that answer is 83. All right, red boxing. Just saying. All right, there you go. There you go. That's that result. Mm -hmm. For part D, we have h composite f of 6. Yes. This means to find h of f of 6. All right. Work with me. So that being the case, we already know that f of 6 equals to 40. We just found that out. It's right here. I'm not doing that over again. Therefore, we'll be plugging in 40 into h. So h of 40 is going to be the following. We'll end up with 40 minus 5. All right just like that. Remember, our h is right here. It's x minus 5. So I plug it back into there. I plug in the 40 where the x is. That gives me 40 minus 5. 40 minus 5 is 35, and I have an answer. There you have it in a red box, just like that. All right, let's continue on. Let's continue on. All right, so continuing on here, ladies and gentlemen, we have once again our three functions, f, g, and h, and now in part e, they want us to find g composite f of x. So this means g of f of x. Okay, so we simply plug in the entire f function into g. That's what we need to do. So that being the case, we'll have the following result. We'll have two times that f function, which is going to be x squared plus 4, then the rest of our g function, which is plus 3. Okay. After I have this, I'm responsible for simplifying the result. So I'm going to get my arrows popping here. That's right, arrows popping. And I'm then going to combine any like terms I may have in the end. This becomes 2x squared plus 8 plus 3, which results, after combining your like terms, into 2x squared plus 11. And that's the answer. Red box, you say? Here it is. There it is. There it is. It's just like that. Just like that. Then, part F. They want us to find H composite H of X. This means H of H of X. Mm -hmm. So you take your H function and you plug it within your H function. 
That's right, inception. So we end up with the following, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that h of x is x minus 5. It's x minus 5. So therefore, I end up with x minus 5 minus 5. Just like that. Mm -hmm. I replace the x in the original h function with the function h of x, which is x minus 5. So instead of writing x first, I wrote x minus 5 right here, then minus 5. Mm -hmm. In fact, you could show parentheses here to show where I replace that x with x minus 5, and then I have the negative 5 there. Well, this is the same as x minus 5 minus 5, which equals to x minus 10, which is the answer. Yeah. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. That's h composite h of x. And this is the end of this lesson, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, if you're able to donate, please do so because that helps us bring you more free math videos from Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus, can't forget trigonometry. 